The famous Greek conqueror Alexander the Great once said, an army can have no success without air superiority. And while some of you are going to blindly swallow the blue pill and believe the establishment when it tells you air combat wasn't invented until thousands of years later, the fact remains, to win a modern war you need to have the best fighters. These are the best of the best currently taking to the skies in 2024. Number 10. Su-35 Russia Just a few months before Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we, along with every other media outlet, all reported on the competency of the modern Russian military. We all happily swallowed the blue pill Russia offered through its aggressive propaganda campaigns. Despite, in hindsight, there was very obvious signs it was not all as it seemed. After all, a modern and capable military really shouldn't be losing hundreds of armored vehicles to a Chechen rebel force with zero armor of their own twice. We have a tendency to see our enemy as 10 feet tall. Famously in preparation for Desert Storm, the US prepared thousands of body bags and extensive morgue facilities for the expected losses. Thus, we don't blame you for being skeptical at our inclusion of the Su-35 at the number 10 spot on this list. We're skeptical ourselves. To gauge the aircraft's effectiveness, we looked into its use in the current war in Ukraine. Russia has suffered a confirmed three losses of the Su-35 in the current war, and it's believed all were due to ground-based air defenses. The jet has been used extensively to strike at ground targets, or at least in their general vicinity as Russia isn't exactly known for its precision. However, it was also used in air combat roles against Ukraine's own fleet of old Soviet jets. This, however, is no indication of the capabilities given that Ukraine's own jets are decades behind in avionics and sensors. The real test will come when Ukraine receives its F-16s, but that won't happen for a few months yet at best. Russia claims the Su-35 is a fourth-generation jet with fifth-generation technology. While Russia has the credibility of Harvey Weinstein defending himself from harassment allegations, historically the Russian aerospace industry has produced some fine aircraft, until the Su-57 at least. On paper, it's a formidable airframe, and it's important to divorce the actual aircraft from its operators, since Russian pilots are famously poorly trained, having approximately a quarter of the flight hours of their American counterparts. Yet the jet itself is widely regarded as a significant threat to any other fourth-generation aircraft, but Russia's claims of four-and-a-half-gen technology fall as flat as its attempts to topple Ukraine in three days. The aircraft has zero sensor fusion and still employs a passive electronic scan array radar, as opposed to ASA radars. Russia still claims it has the longest engagement distances of any fighter in the world, but its marketed 350-kilometer range is only against a bomber-sized target and in a very tiny field of view. In normal volume search mode, its accepted range is only 200 kilometers, and the aircraft has difficulty tracking more than a handful of targets at a time. Its radar is basically comparable to a 1980s APG-70 American radar. So if Russia's plan is to time travel to the 80s to destroy new wave music before they could really take off, it is certainly well suited to that task. It's true, the aircraft is extremely maneuverable, but it's let down by dated missiles with a restrictive 60-degree off-bore sight targeting capability versus 90-degree counterparts like Python 4 and AIM-9X. Furthermore, its dated radar is extremely vulnerable to modern electronic warfare given its low bandwidth. Up against a base model fourth generation aircraft, the Su-35 is probably a lethal threat, but the world has moved on while the Su-35 has languished with dated avionics and outdated missiles. Combine its significant deficiencies with a pilot corps that gets progressively less capable due to combat losses and poor training regimens, and the Su-35 should thank its lucky stars we even bothered mentioning it in this list. Number 9. F-16 USA The F-16 is perhaps the greatest aviation success story in history. Developed during the Cold War, the United States realized that despite its superior technology, it desperately needed a fighter that could be produced cheaply, quickly, and in large enough numbers to equip America's various allies. The F-16 was a fighter jet made to win a war that never came, one that would see truly apocalyptic levels of attrition on both sides. The little fighter that could has proven itself around the world and it got its start in the Vietnam War era when it became clear that the US still needed lightweight and highly maneuverable fighters in large numbers. The Air Force initially rejected the idea and opposed its development as it feared it would cut into the then ongoing F-15 program, but eventually got on board when it realized it would never be able to buy enough F-15s to fulfill all of its needs. The F-16 would beat the competition due to its low operating costs, excellent performance, and similarity in components such as the engine with the F-15. NATO partners soon signed up for their own copies, ensuring the F-16's success as one of the most prolific fighters ever built. 
By 2010, 4,500 F-16s had been delivered to 27 countries. Due to constant upgrades, the F-16 has remained relevant even on the modern battlefield, and the US has even tested the ability to fly the plane remotely or even turning it into an AI entirely. The last iteration, Block 7072, features updated avionics and an APG 83 Acer radar. The plane also packs an automatic ground collision avoidance system to help the plane fly low and avoid enemy radar, making it an excellent platform for suppression of enemy air defenses missions, or SEER. Upgrades to its body extend its service life to a whopping 12,000 hours, and Lockheed Martin fully expects that the F-16 will continue being produced well into 2070. Unlike its Russian counterparts, new clients continue to express interest in the jet, with the latest being India, who is seeking to modernize as it faces growing pressure from China. In service with the US, the F-16 has confirmed 210 kills while suffering two losses to enemy action. Without a doubt, the F-16 is one of the best fighters ever built, and despite being nearly 50 years old, it still packs a lethal punch. With the donation of an estimated 61 to 71 F-16s to Ukraine by allied nations, the Fighting Falcon is going to execute the mission it was bred for, hunt down and destroy Russian planes. Number 8. Eurofighter Typhoon – Europe The Eurofighter Typhoon is proof that when it wants to, Europe can actually take its own defense seriously. And when it does, watch out, because it can produce a real world-class fighter. The Typhoon is the product of cooperation between the UK, Germany, Italy, and Spain. It was meant to help solve the logistics challenges of having a multinational fleet defending Europe. With everyone flying the same plane, logistics and coordination could be simplified. The plan was a moderate success, with most of Europe's largest air fleets utilizing the aircraft. The end of the Cold War was a bit of a speed bump in developing the Typhoon. Suddenly, there wasn't a pressing need for a new air superiority fighter in Europe anymore, and the disputes over labor and cost sharing arose. However, the plane would be adopted in the late 90s and go on to join the air forces of Austria, Italy, Germany, the UK, Spain, Saudi Arabia, Oman, Kuwait, and Qatar. Originally, the Typhoon was meant to dominate the sky as an extremely agile dogfighter. However, the end of the Cold War saw a pressing need for an aircraft that could better support ground troops in conflicts in Africa and the Middle East. This led to the Typhoon being modified to take on the close air support role, a job it wasn't designed for but still does admirably. Its first combat mission was performed during the 2011 invasion in the Libyan Civil War, when it served in reconnaissance and ground strike roles. Surprisingly, the Typhoon had its roots in the United States, with Colonel John Boyd of the US Air Force challenging the early Cold War notion that fighter jets should be all about speed and delivering nuclear weapons. He argued that a modern fighter should be extremely maneuverable and agile, able to outturn and outfight any would-be adversary. Eventually, his influence would directly lead to the development of the F-15 and F-16, two highly agile fighters that were a stark departure from earlier fighter models. Europe would follow suit with the development of the Typhoon, a formidable dogfighter. The jet is renowned for its maneuverability and agility, even having shot down American F-35s and F-22s in mock combat. But there's a part to that story the Europeans don't want to tell you. In all of those engagements, the opposing F-22s and F-35s were forced to start in very close, deeply unfavorable conditions. In the case of the F-22s, they were even forced to carry external fuel tanks, severely limiting maneuverability. In exercises where the aircraft met on neutral ground, the F-22 and F-35 reigned supreme, but that is to be expected from aircraft specifically designed to remain undetected and land the first blow in any engagement. But without a doubt, the Typhoon is one of the most lethal fourth-generation threats in the world. Not only is its core design solid, but the jet has received ongoing and numerous updates to all of its major systems. Its development might have been controversial, but the Typhoon has proven its worth. Number 7. F-18 Super Hornet – USA The Super Hornet is one of the best combat jets in the world because it has to be. When you're operating from the deck of a carrier far from home, you better be the best in the sky because help is probably not coming. The Super Hornet is an evolution of the F-18 Hornet and currently the US Navy's frontline fighter. The aircraft is designed for both air superiority and ground attack and can even conduct electronic warfare missions. It's a flexible, proven design that's cut its teeth in conflicts around the world. The Hornet was designed as a replacement for the impressive but technically complex F-14 Tomcat. With the primary role of fleet air defense, the Hornet had to be fast, able to move at supersonic speeds without afterburners. However, shortly after its introduction, the Navy stressed a requirement for longer ranges, leading to the Hornet 2000 concept in the 1980s, which saw the fuel tanks, fuselage, and wings enlarged. 
the addition of even more powerful engines completed the requirement for a fast, agile fighter that could perform in all weather and during both day and night. The Super Hornet variant owes its existence to the end of the Cold War. Originally, the Navy planned to adopt a stealthy strike aircraft called the A-6 Intruder, which would be the first stealth naval aircraft in the world. However, without the need to take on sophisticated air defenses, the Navy opted instead for an upgrade program to the Hornet to make it a more capable ground attack fighter. With the technology gap growing every year, the Navy also opted for the Super Hornet development over updating the legendary F-14 Tomcat. The Super Hornet is more than an upgrade to the Hornet. It's almost entirely a brand new aircraft. The Super Hornet quickly took on the duties formerly performed by six different aircraft in the light attack, medium attack, fighter, recon, tanker, and even electronic warfare role. With the US Navy single-handedly attempting to destroy the United States by spending all of its money, the Super Hornet was a rare win for both the Navy and the American taxpayer. Currently, the US Navy is in the midst of upgrading from Block 2 to Block 3 Super Hornets, a process scheduled to be completed by 2033 when the F-18 will finally be phased out altogether in lieu of the Navy's next-generation air dominance vehicle. The F-18 has proven itself one of the best fighter jets in the world, not just for its formidable air-to-air -air performance, but also proven itself through its performance in the ground strike role, a key capability for a naval fighter. While there's a debate about the result of an F-18 on Eurofighter engagement, the fact that the Super Hornet can perform vastly more roles than the Eurofighter makes it a significantly better fighter. Number 6. Dassault Rafale, France Disagreements on the performance characteristics of the Eurofighter and the pronunciation of the word croissant led to France leaving the Eurofighter program in lieu of developing its own fighter. The end result is a magnificent aircraft that for once gives the French a real reason to revel in their perceived superiority over all other mortal beings. The Typhoon is a very impressive aircraft and shares many performance characteristics with the Rafale. However, ultimately the Typhoon struggles outside of the role it was originally developed for. The Rafale, however, was born a multi-role platform with the ability to conduct air supremacy, interdiction, reconnaissance, ground attack, in-depth strike, anti-ship, and nuclear deterrence missions. It's a jack-of-all-trades that might not be the best at every role but is pretty damn close to it. It's also the only non-American plane that can operate from US carriers, meaning they could theoretically hitch a ride to any fight aboard the American allies' nuclear-powered carriers. The Rafale suffered like many of the aircraft on this list from post-Cold War budget problems. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, the pressure to develop a next-generation fighter eased considerably, with the French military fighting hard to continue investment in an expensive development and procurement program. In the end, the Rafale entered service in 2001 in three variants, single-seat land and carrier version and twin-seat land version. The Rafale can share targeting data with friendlies for co-op engagement capabilities and features a quadruple redundant fly-by-wire control system to ensure the aircraft can withstand significant battle damage and remain flyable. It also supports the ability to detect stealth aircraft via infrared emissions up to 100 kilometers away and can carry two and a half times its own weight into battle, giving it a significant punch. The only real weakness of the Rafale is its radar, which limits its ability to compete with the best when it comes to beyond visual range engagements. Number 5. F-15EX Strike Eagle USA The F-15 is one of the deadliest aircraft to ever fly. Developed in response to fears that the Soviet Union had outclassed the United States with the MiG-25, in response, the US delivered an aircraft that exceeded the feared MiG-25 by an order of magnitude and cemented its role as what is certainly the best fourth-generation fighter ever developed. But the F-15EX isn't your granddaddy Strike Eagle, it's a different and much scarier monster altogether. The Air Force is spending over a billion dollars acquiring F-15EX, which has a lot of people scratching their heads and wondering why it isn't focusing on the stealthy F-35 instead. The answer is that the US has found a way to leverage the F-15's strengths alongside the F-35's at least until the next generation air dominance program comes to maturity. The F-35 will work alongside the new F-15EX's rather than the one replacing the other. With the stealth capabilities and superior sensors, F-35s can enter hostile airspace and identify targets. Meanwhile, the F-15 flies support with its ability to carry 30,000 pounds of munitions versus the F-35's 5,700 pounds. It's an air combat doctrine known as shoot more missiles than the enemy, and the one-two punch of the F-35's stealth and awareness combined with the F-15's missile load is a lethal combination. The F-15EX builds on the F-15's strengths to feature an even bigger payload with two extra weapon stations. It can also fly faster, 
for longer with more powerful engines that are even more reliable than the ones it's replacing. The F-15 will also dramatically reduce costs, averaging about $29,000 per flight hour in maintenance, which is about half of what the F-35 costs. However, the F-15EX has a life expectancy of 20,000 flight hours versus the F-35's 8,000, a clear cost savings measure for the Air Force. With 12 air-to-air -air missiles, the F-15EX has been called a bomb truck, but improved avionics and pretty much everything else has made the Eagle more deadly than ever, a nightmare for any would-be opponent who's not flying a fifth-generation design. The EX is building on a legendary airframe and continuing a tradition of 104 engagements with zero losses. Number 4. Su-57 Russia Listen, we didn't want to include this plane on the list because, frankly, Russia is a bullshit factory. And what we've seen of the Su-57 isn't really all that impressive. But every website in the world insists it belongs on the top 10 list. It's billed as an F-35 killer, at least by Russian copium addicts. At a price tag that's half the F-35, though, there's significant room to doubt that claim. You're simply not going to be packing the capabilities of a $90 million aircraft into a $42 million one, even if the Russian workforce has probably paid turnips instead of actual money. Throw in the fact that there is yet to be an operational Su-57 since its debut in 2010, and the only F-35 the Su-57 is killing is in Putin's dreams. It's a very maneuverable boy, we know that much from flight demonstrations Russia's put on. What it hasn't demonstrated, however, is its ability to detect, track, target, and destroy targets at a long range and the US is basically all about that. The Su-57 can do all the fancy twirls and pirouettes it wants, but the US specifically sacrificed similar abilities for more useful things, like actually winning wars. From gaps in body panels to exposed rivets on the airframe, the Su-57 is as fifth generation as a flying potato. The only thing the Su-57 has displayed is that Russia lacks the manufacturing sophistication for the incredibly tight tolerances required for a true stealth aircraft. That's not to say the Su-57 isn't stealthy, it certainly has low observable features like the fact that nobody has ever observed it in combat during the entire war in Ukraine. So what can the Su-57 actually do compared to the other fighters on this list? Nobody knows, because Russia lacks any credibility whatsoever. So we might as well just invent capabilities to justify its spot as number 4 on this list. Let's see. The Su-57 can fly to the moon and back in one tank of fuel, and it packs a StarCraft battlecruiser Yamato cannon. The aircraft is so stealthy nobody has ever seen one inside of active Russian air forces. It also costs half as much as an American stealth fighter because everyone knows that the dollar store version is always better than the real thing. Number 3. J-20 – China Back from the land of make-believe, China's first offering from the fifth generation game isn't truly a fifth generation aircraft, but it's close, and a far cry from Russia's Su-57 fantasy felon. The J-20 is a hard plane to get a read on, mostly because, unsurprisingly, the Chinese government has not shared many details. Estimates place the aircraft's range at between 1,000 and 2,000 miles, with a top speed of around Mach 2. Given that it's believed to use stealth coatings, like its American counterparts though, the J-20 is unlikely to be used at supersonic speeds for more than brief sprints, given the damage that such high speeds can cause to stealth coatings. It's a big aircraft about 5 meters bigger than the F-22. This is likely due to China's knowledge that in any coming fight, it'll have to keep American aviation at bay, requiring larger fuel tanks for longer flight time and a greater range. And it seems like this is what the J-20 is primarily designed to do, not necessarily go toe-to-toe -to -toe with US fighters. Instead, the J-20 is likely meant to complicate US operations by being stealthy enough to get in range of vital support platforms, like AWACS and aerial refuelers which would seriously complicate U.S. air operations in a war over the Pacific. The J-20 also appears to not be very well suited for the ground attack role, given that its relatively shallow bay cannot carry weapons with large warheads. However, these are all suppositions, and the J-20's true role within the Chinese air forces is known only to China. The J-20 does likely feature an ASA radar, and sensors embedded into its skin provide the aircraft with a 360-degree awareness similar to the F-35. It's believed the J-20 can also share this data with friendly platforms, leveraging its stealthy characteristics to survive long enough on the front lines to allow other, less survivable platforms to engage the enemy. It also features the ability to fire heat-seeking, short-range missiles from small side bays, which the pilot targets by simply looking at his target, allowing for high off boresight targeting. The J-20 is believed to feature strong frontal aspect stealth, but a much bigger radar cross-section when viewed from the sides or from behind. This is in line with the Russia Su-57, 
and likely proof that China knows it can't truly compete in the stealth department against much more mature US technology. Frontal stealth, however, will let the J-20 get close enough to target vulnerable support platforms and decrease detection ranges enough that it might even be able to threaten F-35s in close dogfights, where the F-35 is known to be weak. For just a first offering, the J-20 is a significant step up for the Chinese military. However, China continues to be plagued by weak, unreliable engines, which would directly affect sortie rates. Further, it's known that China has stolen a significant amount of technology from the US and its Western partners. While showing that its defense industry is adept at reverse engineering tech, but not so good at innovating. Without the ability to innovate, China may lag perpetually behind American and European industry. Number 2. F-35 USA It's probably the most controversial aircraft program in history, with detractors calling the F-35 a disaster almost since inception. And to be fair, the most expensive weapons program in human history has been rife with controversy and difficulties, all stemming from what might have been an American tendency for overreach. But with F-35s being delivered at a steady rate, the plane has redeemed itself, even if costs haven't quite gone down as much as the American taxpayers were promised. The F-35 is a shift in American air doctrine. For decades, the US was focused on agile and highly maneuverable dogfighters, which could win the close-in fight. However, with air defense technology improving at a rapid pace and new generations of missiles cropping up faster than new aircraft, the US has bet that low detectability is the key to winning the future fight. And we're all desperately hoping America has made the right decision, because the US is going all in on stealth. The F-35 got bad press for being a terrible dogfighter, and that's because the aircraft was never designed with dogfighting in mind. Instead, the F-35 utilizes its advanced stealth and superior sensors to spot enemy threats from long range and engage them with a first look, first shoot capability. It doesn't matter what fancy maneuvers your fighter can perform at an air show if it's getting turned to scrap metal from 100 kilometers away. But the multi-role fighter is much more than just an air superiority fighter. The F-35 has been likened to a quarterback in the sky, and it can serve as a miniature air command and control node. Its sensor fusion allows it to collect data together from its various sensors and then disseminate it to other nearby friendly platforms. Its all-aspect stealth enables it to penetrate enemy air defenses and either engage them directly or guide weapons fired by other platforms to their targets. In truth, the F-35 is so deadly not because of what it can do, but because of what it enables other aircraft and platforms to do. The F-35 has also proven itself in the strike rule, conducting air operations against ISIS targets in the Middle East. Israel has used the F-35 to strike at Syrian air defenses, proving its stealth and ability to conduct SEAD missions. The nation was so pleased with the performance of the F-35, it agreed to purchase a third fleet of the stealth fighter, partially funded by US military aid. Number 1. F-22 USA It was the world's first fifth-generation fighter and is now on the chopping block as the US rapidly moves to replace it. Despite this, it is still the deadliest aircraft to ever take to the skies. The F-22 is a victim of its own success. Originally designed in the last days of the Cold War, it was meant to fly deep into Soviet territory and smack Soviet MiGs around. Instead, the Soviet Union saw the movie Top Gun and decided that the best thing they could do is forfeit. But the end of the Soviet Union meant that the US was no longer facing an existential threat to its existence, and the existence of a free Europe. And it definitely didn't need a hundred million dollar aircraft packed to the gills with stolen UFO technology. Thus, some aspects of the F-22 were toned down as cost-saving measures, and a planned fleet of hundreds was reduced to just about 200. For the years, the world's best air superiority fighter was a jet with no mission, so the US Air Force got to the task of adopting it for ground strike missions just so it could justify its massive operational price tag. The F-22 proved adept at delivering precision strikes against terrorist and insurgent targets, but that was like driving a Formula One race car to go pick up groceries at the corner store. The rise of China saw a renewed interest in air superiority fighters that could basically punk anything else in the sky. With the radar cross-section estimated to be the size of a marble, the F-22 could push past the front lines to keep enemy fighters at bay and protect the US fourth generation fleet. Alternatively, it could penetrate enemy air defenses and act like an assassin, eliminating critical enemy air assets like AWACS platforms or incoming bombers. But while the F-22 is deadly, it's also rapidly aging and in a few years will no longer hold the top spot on this list. That's because the F-22 was not designed with the ability to easily upgrade key technologies. Unlike current upgrades to open architecture that will ensure the F-35 is relevant despite technological improvements for decades to come. 
Its aging avionics were deemed too expensive to try to refurbish, and the F-22 lacks one critical capability that's a cornerstone of the US military, and the secret to its extreme lethality. It has difficulty sharing information with other platforms. The F-22 is on the way out, and by 2030 the US military plans to fully replace it with the INGAD program, which aims to field the first sixth-generation fighter. Until then, the F-22 remains in low numbers but ready to counter even the deadliest balloons that China can muster. Now go check out what the future holds with the US Air Force has secretly built and flown a new fighter jet, or click this other video instead.